We can access the first element of this array using the at method and passing the argument 0. We can also use the first method. If we want the first two elements, we can pass the argument 2. More commonly, though, we'll use square bracket notation for accessing the elements of an array. Because the array is indexed starting at 0, this is yet another way of getting the first element. You might be surprised to learn that I can also access the first element, in this case by using minus 3. And the reason this works is because the last element is minus 1, the middle element is minus 2, and the first element is minus 3. And rather than hard code minus 3, to access the first element we can use minus a dot size. The array has a size of 3, so we're looking at element minus 3. And we can use size minus 1 to get the last element of the array. In this example, to look up the value 3, we need to look at index 2, because the array is indexed from 0. So to do that programmatically, we subtract 1 from the size of the array. And just as we have a first method, we also have a last method, which also takes arguments. So we can look at the last two elements of the array by passing the argument 2 to the last method. If we want to look at the values 4 through 8, we can use this notation, which specifies a starting point and how many elements we want to include. In this case, our starting point is the value 4, which is index 3 in this array, 0, 1, 2, 3, and we're counting 5 elements. Another way to access the values 4 through 8 is by passing a range where the beginning and ending points of the range represent the beginning and ending indexes of the values that we want to access. We could also use the slice method exactly the same way. And if we use the comma notation, again, the first argument specifies the starting index and the second argument specifies the number of elements that we want to access. So again, we get the values 4 through 8. And another way we can do this is using an exclusive range instead of an inclusive range and negative indexing. So I'm indicating an exclusive range using the three dot notation. And because we're using negative indexing, we're counting from the back of the array where the 10 represents index negative 1. 9 represents index negative 2, and because an exclusive range doesn't include the end point, the value 8 would represent the end of the subarray that we're accessing. We could also use negative indexing with an inclusive range by using negative 3. In this example, I have an array of single quoted strings, a, b, a, b, and I can use the index method to find the array index of the first occurrence in the array of the argument to the method, in this case, the single quoted string b. This method is going to find the second element, which has an index of 1. Instead, if I use the rindex method, I can look for the last element in the array, which matches this argument. And in that case, I'm going to find the fourth element of the array, which has an index of 3. Instead of passing an argument to the method, I can use a block and perform a test in the block, and if the test is true, the index of that element will be returned. And I can do the same thing for the index method. And to simply test for the existence of an element, I can use the include method with a question mark, and it will return true or false depending on whether the argument to the method exists in the array.